As I said in the introduction, Audacity is a little different from most other modern DAWs. Basic functions like recording and bouncing, exporting the finished audio file, are the same, but editing and processing utilize a somewhat different approach. Most DAWs employ what's called a non-destructive or real-time approach to editing and processing. What that means is that once an audio file has been recorded or imported into the project, the various edits, cutting, trimming, rearranging sections of that recording, do not actually change the data in the original recorded or imported audio file. Instead, that audio file remains intact. The waveform displays you see in the track lanes don't directly represent the audio data. Instead, they represent pointers to sections of the original data in the original audio files. When an audio region or clip, a selected section of the waveform, is edited, those changes only exist in the project file itself. The original audio file's data remains unchanged. So if the engineer cuts out a section, this doesn't actually remove audio data, it just points to a smaller section of the original audio file. That's why the engineer can drag the edge of an edited region back out to reveal the original data that's still there in the original audio file, intact and untouched. Any editing method that doesn't actually change the original data is referred to as non-destructive, and this is how the vast majority of DAWs work. All audio edits exist only within the project session as references, pointers, to the original unchanged audio recordings. When the project is done, the engineer exports, bounces the project down to a new audio file, the finished stereo master audio file. This new audio file combines all the audio tracks in the project and includes all the non-destructive edits that were made. At the end of the project, the original audio files are still there untouched and the non-destructive edits remain as part of the project file. The new Stereo Master audio file is the finished project, incorporating all the non-destructive edits suitable for distribution or streaming. Likewise, when mixing a project, blending all the various tracks, setting their relative levels, and adding processing and effects, a non-destructive or real-time approach is again used by most DAWs. The tracks are represented by channel strips in a mixer that's designed to mimic the functionality of a traditional hardware mixing console. Processor plugins are inserted to perform mixing tasks like EQ and compression and to add effects like chorusing or echo. But these plugins normally create their effects in real time during playback only. Once again, the original audio files are not altered. When the final bounce is done, the exported finished stereo master will include all the real-time non-destructive effects on all the tracks, finalizing the sound of the real-time mix in that finished master audio file. Audacity takes a different approach. In Audacity, all the editing and processing is destructive. The waveform displays in the track lanes do directly represent the audio in the original audio recordings, and when a change is made, when a section is cut out, for example, that change is made to the actual audio file data itself. Now, of course, this is a perfectly legitimate way to work. In fact, it's how many editors have operated over the years. But for someone who's familiar with the other, more common approach, it may take some getting used to. Processing in Audacity is also destructive. When an audio selection is tweaked, like with EQ, for example, or an effect is added, that change is made directly to the relevant section of audio data. Now, Pro Tools users may find this a little more familiar than those who've only seen other DAWs. Pro Tools has always incorporated a similar option as an alternative to its usual real-time processing tools. Pro Tools plugins in the Audio Suite plugin format work the same way as the processing plugins in Audacity. The effect is dialed up, auditioned within the plugin window, and then applied destructively to the selected section of audio. Once the processing has been applied, any CPU power it may use is freed up, but you can't just come back the next day and turn the effect off unless you'd had the forethought to copy that unprocessed section of the original audio and stash it elsewhere in the timeline as a backup before adding the effect. Those users who are completely new to audio recording, editing, and processing will find Audacity's workflow to be perfectly straightforward once they've learned the basic approach. Those who may have had some experience with other DAWs may find that they need to rethink their workflow to adapt to Audacity's methodology. For them, as I go through editing, I'll occasionally mention how to accomplish tasks in Audacity that might be done a little differently in other real-time DAWs. That said, while Audacity may not be as convenient as some other DAWs for certain projects, like large multi-track music arrangements, 
It's an excellent tool for a wide range of applications, from recording and editing voiceovers for video and podcasts, a popular usage, to creating basic music tracks for songwriting purposes, to editing and mastering stereo mixes, finalizing them for distribution. Next up, we'll look at setting up for a session in Audacity.